first time here. But you've been to with Hare Krishna program before? Yeah, well, yeah I've been to Temple Street. Oh. How many of you are from Brighton? Who's from Brighton? Home, oh, actually. Home. Oh. 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 Is this your little boy? Is this your little boy? Yes. situations, you know, like Darren was saying something about cricket earlier on. I'm not into cricket, but please forgive me. <laughs> if you're into cricket. Uh, but you know, you put on a different dress when you're playing cricket, don't you, really? Different move, isn't it? Costume. Costume, that's the word. Different the body is a costume. Yeah, the, well, the body's a costume. But even on top of the body, you know, it's just like we've got a costume, like a dress on, you know, this type of cloth. Everyone's got a particular type of cloth. And for different situations sometimes, and you put on a different cloth. Sometimes when you go to bed, you put on pajamas or night dress or something. I don't know ladies different today, what they wear. You put on a different dress when you go to the beach. Because in Brighton, I don't know, sometimes you may be able to go swimming, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, last week I went to Marvish this morning. Did you really? Wow, I, I felt like going for a bit today. But, uh, you know, you put on a different dress according to the situation which you're in. So we do change like that. We change our moods, you know, when we're with our friends. We're not necessarily in the same mood as we are if we're working in a shop or office or something or another, driving a bus or something. We, we're in a different mood, you know, when we're with our friends. We're going for a drink if you're into that, or whatever it is. I like your balls, don't you? We put on a different dress, you know. A different mood. When you're with your kids, you put on a different mood than when you're, say, with, you know, with your mates. It's, uh, we're the same person, but, you know, we take on, like, different, isn't it? A different kind of mood. We act, yeah, we act. We act differently, and maybe even dress differently, and so on. Talk differently. Different, maybe you can, many different things are there. But we're the same person, basically. Now, although in the world we're in, say it's kind of limited really to the extent that we can enjoy, to the extent that we can expand, to the extent that we can experience. Are you okay? Come. Don't worry about me. Come on. Don't get your Don't be worried about me. What's your name? What's his name? Dan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All about the heroin, you know. <laughs> I feel. 
Yes. Higher, higher pleasure. Prabhupada's strata is Krishna consciousness. Spiritual means a higher pleasure. You know, because, because we haven't got much in this world, too much experience of that, uh, that people do turn to, even this recent problem with you know, youngsters and people in general wanting a bit of a riot. You know, there's a frustration inside people, you know? It's all very well punishing people, but it doesn't change the fact that they're frustrated and unhappy. Because they're not experiencing the deeper purposes of, you know, being in this world, or being in this body, but spiritual purposes. So we try to satisfy our natural desires for happiness in so many ways. Natural desires for living a long time, living forever, whatever it is, in different ways. But it, it only has it has a limited effect, you know, in the material world. So the real pleasure is on, on another plane altogether, a spiritual plane. So now we're going to talk a little bit about today's event. It's um, the appearance day. We may think that well, that's very strange. We have our birthday yesterday. Whose birthday was it yesterday? Priya. Here we are, Priya. Priya's birthday yesterday. She was 29 yesterday. <laughs> Anyone's birthday today? Anyone's birthday? No? Last day? No, it's birthday. There's different types of birthdays, and some of these birthdays, and millions of people having birthdays today. Well, we may say, what is this? You're talking about, one minute you're saying, Balaram is Krishna, and then the other say, you say, Krishna is God. What's that word? What do you mean? God is eternal. God is eternal. We're also eternal, really. When you say birthday, we're referring to when we kind of came out in this body, so to speak, you know. But God is eternal, that's a fact. But he has pastime, just like we do different things for different purposes, dress in different ways, talk in different ways, listen to different music. So many things, go to different places, come here, come there. Always we're looking for, for some kind of satisfaction like that. Because that's there in the spiritual world. God, Krishna's an Adamoya Vyasa. He's, he's always expanding his pleasure. We want to expand ours, and we do to a little extent. And it comes to a level, and it kind of goes down, you have to do something else, up, down, up, down, sometimes up, sometimes down. It's the material world, it's the world of duality. Spiritual world is no duality. Spiritual Satchit Ananda is eternal bliss and full of knowledge. And that's the, the realm of ever, ever increasing, this ever increasing pleasure philosophy of the Lord, Nanda Chinmaya. This ever increasing pleasure of the Lord. His pleasure is ever increasing. Everything he does is for pleasure. We want to do the same thing because we're the same quality as God in, in spiritual essence. And we also want to ever increase, but in the material world, it has limits, you know? Limits of their time, limits, capacity. And other people have a different idea about it sometimes, you know? They, they don't agree with their ideas. And things have a, a tendency to be curtailed sometimes. The spiritual world, there is no cessation. There's no, uh, either by time or by circumstance or anything, any ever increasing pleasure. But that means to get to the spiritual world is another thing altogether. We'll talk about that in a minute if we can. But in the spiritual world, there are pastimes. Now let us look back. Now we've got little Danny here. How do you call Danny? Zach. Zach. Zach, as we said, Danny. Zach. Zach. Zach, as we said, Dan. Zach. Zach. We've got Zach here. So, Zach, what do you like doing, Zach? What's his favorite play? Um, we used to do the sand pit, and he loved that. Loves so the sand pit. You will look back to our childhood now in India, maybe, I don't know if you had sand pits. You certainly had some kind of play when you were kids, right? Playing around in the mud. I used to play around in the sand and the mud. It's the same thing almost all over the world. Kids, you, they don't really need at a certain age. They don't need too much, do they, really? <coughs> you know, all that modern stuff that we give the kids. The kids, kind of, they kind of, obviously, if you give it to them, they start getting attached to it. But even without all that stuff, it's amazing how kids can have a fantastic time sometimes just in the sand pit, isn't it? Just in the mud. We used to play in the mud, you know, playing with sticks and stones, you know, building little things out of the mud. Yeah. Huh? Simplistic. Simple things, real simple. Climbing trees when you got a little bit bigger, you know, making little dens in, 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 in the little bushes and stuff, you know. <laughs> Staying out, trying to hide from mum and dad, you know, hiding away somewhere in a bush, you know. 
and having fun. It's amazing how much fun simple things are. You don't need all these modern, you know, driven kind of consumer items, basically. It's just all, it's a bunch of junk, really, isn't it? I mean, all these plastic things are, you know, you know, you know, you know, all this stuff. It's really ends up in the bin anyway. Usually, it very quickly once the child gets hold of it. Uh, but the simple things of nature give so much pleasure. Even running around sometimes. You see the kids, you see these guys, you know, and like uh, and Zach sometimes. And they like each other? Are they friends? Yeah. They are. Yeah. They're good friends. Good, good, yes, good. And sometimes they just run around laughing and laughing. They're not doing anything in far as we can see. They're just running around jumping and laughing, right? And they're having a great time. Having great, or just looking at things, isn't it? New things, looking at new people, hearing new sounds. The spiritual world is nothing but new sounds, new people. And everything's ever fresh. Can you imagine that? And eternal, can you imagine? It's almost impossible to conceive. Sometimes people think, oh, spiritual life, no televisions, oh, no, no <laughs> mobiles, no, no, no computers, none of these modern physics. Wonderful things which we have, which have made our life so pleasing. No cameras. Oh my goodness. What a world. It's so boring. No, nothing. So boring, huh? But believe me, the kids, I mean, sometimes they get bored, don't they? Whoa. Hey, bored. Sofa stuff. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I used to be to be honest. But, uh, oh. But it's not at all. It's everyone, everyone loves like the kids, you know, when they're playing, they're just full of like, they don't want to stop. They don't want to eat. They don't want to go home. They don't want anything. They don't want to play. When you try to stop them, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, you know, you know, you know, the tantra when you try to get in the way of his happiness. So they, they have a different, I mean, but we all went through it. And there's a little light, and that's why it's sometimes said you have to be childlike to enter the kingdom of God. Because that simplicity and that, or just innocence, you can say, is the nature of the spiritual world. Is the nature of Krishna's, he, he's got his other, God's got his other side. And most people think of God as, oh, mighty God, you know, controlling everything out of fear and so on. Okay, that's there, and just like you can say, you know, prison type of thing is one part of a government operation. That's not the main part. It's only for certain people for some reason or another. But that's not the main, they don't want that. So the material world, Krishna, not that God wants us in this material world, wants us to suffer. That one thing is, it's actually our choice that we're here. And it's our choice if we want to go back to God here, that's all. So sometimes, Krishna himself, he, he comes into this world, he expands himself into this world also, he expands himself in so many wonderful forms, to enjoy unlimited pastimes with everybody. You can imagine if it's just one God. Okay, okay, one God. And there's countless spirit souls, whatever you want to call it. We call it Jiva in Sanskrit. Spirit souls, entities, living entities, people, call it what you will, whatever you understand. Countless. One God. Right? Now, just to give an example, when Krishna comes to this planet, this is very confidential. But he accepted many, 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 many wives. You know that? How many wives? Where? In Dwarka. Hey. Sixteen. Is that in Dwarka? In Dwarka. Uh -huh. In Dwarka. Sixteen thousand wives. How can you imagine that? What about 108? And 108. Jeez. Sometimes people think, my God, what kind of God is this? What kind of God is that? That's God. He can do it. You know? We can't. We could, you may be able to do it in logistically speaking, but you can't really do it, you know. Logistically, you might get assigned forms, but you can't do it. Krishna looked at it because they all wanted a loving relationship with God in that mood. So God expands himself. Krishna expands himself to be with each and every one of them all the time. That's God. You know, if you believe he had that many wives, you have to believe that he expands himself. Because the same sentence, says that he expanded himself to accept 16,108 devotees who wanted to serve him or love him in the mood of a wife. He has his friends, countless friends, coward boyfriends, countless. He expands to be with all of them. This is God. So 
But isn't, isn't it true that Krishna is in the heart of every living entity? So it's expanding into 16,000 forms is not a great Nothing. deal. He's but in everyone's He's in everyone's heart as well. In this world, he expands himself into all of our hearts. He's with us always. But we, have, we just are not connecting with him. He's our best friend. We want love. We want friendship. Don't we? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yes. Most people do. Oh. Harry Ball. <laughs> Harry Ball. <laughs> I tell all the Indian devotees when they're in whenever you ball, just say, Harry Ball! <laughs> Everybody likes fun, don't they? That's what it's about. Fun! Having fun. Having fun! Having Woo. fun. Having fun, Jack. Yeah, spiritual is full of fun. That's all it is, isn't it? Play. My bow. Hey, come back. My bow. Come back. No, come back. Come back. Quick, quick. Come back. Give her the, give her the Varuni. She hasn't had the Varuni. I know. Really good for Varuni. Give her that cup, quick. Christina, give her that cup. That's Varuni beverage. Wow. A whole cup? Yeah, of course. There's more than enough. Did you have any of this? No, you didn't get it. I don't even know if I haven't tasted it. I don't know if I have the chance to test it out. Drink it quick, I'm going to go to sleep tonight. <laughs> Probably going to get arrested on the plane on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Drunken. It's only nasty. Spiritual life also, sometimes people think of religion and spiritual life is really dry and boring, but it's not, is it? Priya, is it boring? No. No. It's fun. Didn't you enjoy yourself just now dancing and swinging and chanting and jumping and so on? But all the kids in that park, what's that park called we went through, Dina? Hey, where are you, Dina? You're going back to being a baby again. Yeah. Where were we this afternoon in that park? Um, the level. No, it was no the level. Uh, it was uh, a level. The Vivian Garden. All the kids there all having a fun, huh? Drinking and dancing and chanting. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't matter. They're all jolly happy. Spiritual life is meant to be actually to shanti children of each other. Everlasting of bliss. Shanti, yes. Shanti is peaceful. Now he's putting a new, a new, a new uniform on. Oh, be careful. Be careful. Oh, I'm getting ready for the future. <laughs> He's got to be careful what he's wearing these days. <laughs> you know, might mistake you for the wrong thing or not. <laughs> uh, this, uh, this is a good party, but then we have an end to this party and we have to go to the next party. There is no end, my friend. Exactly. <laughs> there is an end to this party. There is no end. Believe <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah. never, this never ends. It gets better every day. Yeah. But time. these people won't be here in two hours' time. Oh, oh you've come with us. <laughs> come with us. <laughs> you don't have to go anywhere else. Come with us. Come to the spiritual world. <laughs> You're going to another party in Amsterdam? Yeah, tomorrow I'm going to Amsterdam. We're having a big festival this yeah. week. Amsterdam. <laughs> party like a rock star. Yeah, great time. Anyway, back to Lord Balaram. Balaram is Krishna's first expansion. And he's white colored. And Krishna expands in that way in order to expand his own pleasure and to facilitate the desires of all different living entities so that the pleasure potency, um, spiritual potency increases more and more and more. The material world is a reflection of the spiritual world, so you see that the tendency is there in this material world, but it's a reflection. And reflection obviously doesn't contain all of the aspects of, you can say, that which is reflected. It has something in common, but not all. So we've already mentioned some of the things it doesn't have in common. It's, uh, you know, things are always changing in the sense that, you know, we were, as you just said, we can't stay here, we're only going to be here for another hour or so, and on to another party. That's the nature of the material world. In the spiritual world, everything is eternal, yet everything is also ever increasing and ever expanding in pleasure. So Lord Balaam, he comes with Krishna. When Krishna comes himself into this material world, his expansions also come with him. His very intimate associates also come with him. So in the Bhagavad Gita, we have the Bhagavad Gita, the Krishna book here. We have the Bhagavad Gita here. Oh, there's one over the far side there. Do you need the Not really. 
<laughs> Fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna is explaining one of the reasons he comes. Two reasons. Pyrotrania Sadhana and Ashya Chadushtika. Dharma Sadhana. Some of you be again. He comes again every millennium again and again. He keeps coming into this world. Why? He doesn't come here to enjoy it that least. He does, but his primary reason to come here is to give us a chance. And to give us a chance to have an opportunity to realize the spiritual side of life. Yeah? And he performs all kinds of pastimes, even within this realm. We have two books here. Some of you have these <laughs> books? Who's got these books? Christian books. Quite a lot of you have got them. So these books are really fascinating. I remember the first time I got one of these books. It would have been, I don't know if this is a two volume set. Is it a two volume set? Yeah. Yeah, it's a two volume set. It's a new edition, but 1971 I got this book. An old edition. I was walking through the uh, streets of London and I went to a court bookshop off Charing Cross Road. And I went to this shop and I was looking for something about Krishna. And sure enough, in the shelf there was this big, much bigger than this, book, Krishna book. I saw it there, big red, bright red. <laughs> And I thought, what is this? I picked it out. <gasps> Krishna. It just like it, it was ecstatic. A lot more pictures with the old edition. Mm -hmm. Very wonderful pictures. And I thought, I've got to get this. It was a second hand occult bookshop. So I bought it. I didn't know what it paid, not much. And I got that book. That was my first time. But in this Krishna book, some of the wonderful, wonderful stories. Just like sometimes we like to read stories of great people, don't we? You know, I guess we've all got our heroes in this world, or somebody we like to hear about. Maybe ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> you like me. I like to hear about myself. I <laughs> don't really like to hear about anyone else. But I make a, I make a show of it sometimes. <laughs> but somehow we do like to hear about things, and we've all got something we like to hear about, isn't it? <laughs> sometimes it's not such a. Yeah, we, we say, oh, 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 I'm so sorry to hear about that. But we love to hear about it sometimes, don't we? <laughs> you know, it's funny, our warped mind sometimes. But in the spiritual, well, that's also going on, but there is all blissful. Yes, there is fighting in the spiritual world, but there is blissful. Just like children, they like to fight sometimes, don't they? <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Have fun, you know. You have fun, still today. I mean, but unfortunately, it's got a warped or perverted purpose behind it in the material world. <coughs> Envy and anger and lust and greed and so many things. Those things are not there in the spiritual realm. It's all fun. But Krishna sometimes he fights with his friends also. They have fun fighting with each other. <laughs> they hit up it. It's fun. And the material world, unfortunately, may start off like that, but it turns to something else after all. Yeah. <laughs> But so Krishna comes into this world to perform some of these wonderful, wonderful pastimes. And why? So we can hear about them. If you read this book, you can, you can see the wonderful pastimes. Let's, let's look at one pastime. I don't know what to call it. Call it two. I haven't really prepared anything here at all. There's, there's a pastime of, let's see what she reads. I want to read something about Balaram. Think of a pastime of Balaram. Balaram is Krishna's brother in this world. He appears like his brother. And together they enjoy childhood pastimes, little children, and they enjoy pastimes of youth and so on. He's a piece of the right? Yeah. He's a piece of the right. Great. What do you want? Some water, young lady? Yeah, yeah. Come on, water. She wants some water. Sorry. What, what past? Come on, think of a pastime of Lord Balaram. Here's one. Rukmi, the pastime of Rukmi. Rukmi, what page is that on? Can't remember. No, I can't remember. I've got the bit of the gorilla here. Oh, that's brilliant. That's oh, a good yeah. one. That's a really good one. Yeah. Divida. Divida. Divida the gorilla. I always get what you want. Let's just read this a short pastime. This is just to give you a little example. Can I ask a quick question? Huh? Quick question? Yeah. What, why... Why is there a tendency in this Mahatattva, in this material realm, for things to turn sour? 
and how is it that the spiritual world is ever fresh and it doesn't turn sour? How to get it? Well, you know, it's like you take a fruit. <laughs> what causes a fruit to turn sour? Bacteria. The bacteria in contact with various bacteria, certain circumstances turn even the sweet fruit sour. So by nature we're all sweet. Every soul is sweet by nature. But in contact with the material energy, then you know, different modes of nature are going to come out a little different. It appears a little different. It's still the same person, but that which kind of manifests, let's say, appears differently according to the modes of nature. Um, and when we're separated from Krishna, just like the finger when it's separated from the body, what happens to it? Decomposes. Decomposes, you see. So when the soul, when the soul is separated from Krishna, though in one sense we're not really separated, but we're in the mood of being separated. We appear to be separated. So naturally you kind of like you lose that kind of like that freshness, so to speak, that spiritual freshness of the pure. Like a spark out of fire. Fire. What happens to a spark? When it comes out of fire? Jumps, yeah. Jumps the fire. Jumps out of fire. Fire and then what's it do? Goes out. Goes, Goes out and it extinguishes. The soul is like a spark that's like out of the fire really in this material world. We have a little spark, but it kind of sparks a little bit, then it gets out again, you know, 50 years later, pop, poops out again. And even then, it's not very bright. You know, in the material world, we're not really very bright. So we're like sparks out of the fire. The matches with sparks out of the fire, then it's kind of like other things. It takes on other qualities. When the sparks in the fire, it has its quality of fire. When it's out of the fire, that isn't there. Potential is still there, but the fire is not there. When the soul is out of this uh, out of spiritual consciousness, when you're in, covered by material consciousness, in the material body, identifying with the material body, identifying with the world around us, and so on and so forth. And the tendency is that we become, um, let's say, affected, just like bacteria affects the uh, fruit in certain circumstances. So the art is to try to reconnect with Christians. And it's not that you know, anyone's beyond it. There's, there's no question of being eternally separated or something like that. There's no, nobody is eternally cut off. Everybody has the chance to connect with Krishna. Everyone has a chance to awaken their spiritual self-realization if they want. But it does, just like material speaking, by association with the material world, we develop certain qualities. By association with Krishna and his pastime, and the worries of Krishna, we may also develop the natural qualities of the soul. It's not a question of, of getting something really from anywhere else, it's just a question of cleansing our hearts of material conditions. Just like in your own body, sometimes we come into contact with various things, I don't know, the latest disease that's going around, you know, whether it's swine flu, pig flu, uh, bird flu, fish flu, uh, what else? I want the latest one is <laughs> elephant flu. They give all sorts of names and blame somebody for it. <laughs> but nothing to do with them whatsoever, probably whatsoever. But uh, Maybe. So the latest thing, and then you're, you know, you have to simply, hey, whoa, hey, Krishna, look at Krishna. Hey, whoa, 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 hey, it's not that you have to get rid of it. Some people think get rid of it altogether. We don't say that. We say, learn how to purify our consciousness. Don't get rid of our personality. But learn how to actually purify our personality, purify our consciousness. By utilizing this body in a way that would help in that regard, too. Instead of just being kind of drawn around by our minds and our bodies and trying to enjoy this world in different ways. But rather utilize this body in a way where we can start to experience our inner or spiritual um, and nature. Saturation. 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 Saturate. 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 You know, it goes down yellow, little yellow, and everything tastes bitter. So it's like, you know, it's, it's not that everything is bitter, but it tastes bitter. All you have to do when the disease is cured, and it starts to taste whatever it is, sweet or salty, whatever it may be. 
it's not a question of cutting off, you know, cutting, giving, giving up your life, and it's just removing the cause of the disturbance. That's true. When you when you become healthy, then everything becomes tasty again. So it's like becoming spiritually healthy, and, and you can really enjoy. Even in this world, you can enjoy nature, even in this world, not from the necessary from intoxication or from the things that you look for in this world. Sex life and so on, all those things are definitely there in this world, but they're not the highest pleasure. They're only a flickering pleasure. They come and go, you know. Little satisfaction, but it doesn't last. And sometimes it backfires even. There's a deeper pleasure, a real pleasure within. And that's the spiritual pleasure. And that really comes from the relationship. First of all, spiritual understanding, no doubt, and spiritual realization, but also our relationship with Krishna. That's the real pleasure comes from. It's called Rasa. So Krishna, that means mellow, sweet taste in a relationship with Krishna. So when Krishna comes to this world, he performs these wonderful pastimes, which are described here. We're going to read one of them. Now this is regarding uh, race. It's a race. Well done. Equal. Yeah, that was definitely an equal race. That was brilliant. It's well done, man. Oh, in this world, there's always a loser. Well, I don't think they both won. <laughs> I don't see any losers here. They both won. <laughs> <She won. laughs> Let's see. Anyway, we're, we're not. We're not. We're going a little bit here and there tonight because of circumstances. Please bear with us. The deliverance of Devinda Gorilla. Yes, gorillas are also people. lesser being, okay, they may have a different nature in some ways, um, but they're also spirits, they're also being. Every living entity is a living being. Even the body of a germ is also a living being. It's very low consciousness, you could say, in one sense. may not have so much awareness, but still a living being. So the lawyers there, they may think of the welfare of every living entity, Krishna does too. So sometimes, uh, it comes out in different ways, and this is one of those wonderful ways. Sometimes Krishna likes to fight, Balaram does too. So this one person I named the Vida, let's read about it. Uh, let's see. Sukadeva Goswami continued. He was speaking about the pastimes of Krishna. Krishna performs these pastimes to give pleasure. Parikhanaya Sadhana. He was, began to speak on the transcendental pastimes and the characteristics of Lord Krishna. King Krishna, he was the one who was listening to him listening to him speak, upon hearing him, became more and more enthusiastic and wanted to hear more and more. Shukadeva Goswami next narrated the story of Vida, the gorilla who was killed by Lord Balaram. What's next? Oh, what's going on behind there? Where's that hiding? It's all fun, isn't it, Max? The gorilla was a great friend of Bhomasura, or Narakasura, who was killed by Krishna in connection with his kidnapping 16,000 princesses from all over the world. When Krishna kills anyone, he doesn't go away. Everyone's being killed anyway by time. But when Krishna kills somebody, what happens to them? They go back to the spiritual world. But his loving killing is to Krishna is all the same, basically. Whatever he does is all beneficial. Any opportunity you have. It's sad for the material point of view. Oh my goodness. This is horrible. Oh my God, who comes with that? This is this different. He delivers. He delivers that person back to the spiritual world. Well, it doesn't it doesn't say that it's actually very difficult to get killed by Krishna. Yeah. It's not so easy. We're all getting swept up by time. But to personally, personally, in the presence of Krishna, when we leave our bodies, it's very, very, very unfortunate. Hey, we're all aspiring for that, aren't we? And we're all going to leave our bodies sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> you look so happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> liberation, liberation. <laughs> liberation, yeah. Step and stand for victory. Yeah. <laughs> if we're still attached to this world, we have a few more lessons to learn, yeah. So the real freedom, liberation, is when we have no more worries about Establishing our mark in this world. Excuse me, sorry, but <laughs> no words, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We will certainly agree. So in this world, we 
we're going to try it for that. Oh, it's great. We don't really get it. So um, here, the devotees, they want, they want to remember Krishna, the time of death, isn't it? Isn't that what we're trying to do? Otherwise, whatever we remember the time of death, Krishna says that's what we get. If you're thinking of material things, that's what you get. If a man is thinking of a woman, he'll get a woman's body. If we're doing that, of course we have a requirement, it may not be in the human body, it may be in an animal body, it may be a female dog or a female this or that. So we want to try to develop this mood of remembering Krishna. The best thing, you know, we're always remembering something. Everyone's always absorbed in remembering something, aren't they? And how much pleasure do you get together? But when you remember Krishna, you get an awful lot of pleasure. Not awful. <laughs> 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 so we use it as a funny a contradiction, isn't it? An awful lot of pleasure. You know? It's almost a contradiction. You get an unending pleasure, remember? <laughs> Just like when you remember, you remember somebody you love, somebody who's very dear to you, you feel some, some kind of pleasure, isn't it? Make sense? There you go. Did I give you your sticker? Did she get her sticker? Yeah, she got me. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Right, okay. So in the material world, we, you know, we remember, we, we don't get that much pleasure from it. Sometimes it brings distress. But when we remember Krishna, ever-ending pleasure. So these pastimes are performed, so we have something to remember. So please read this. It's wonderful to think about Krishna's pastimes. No matter what our anxieties may be, what our frustrations may be, what our disturbances in this world, simply remembering Krishna. Just remember Krishna and you'll feel satisfied. Our spiritual life is to remember Krishna. Not just to forget the material world. That doesn't really solve the problem, forgetting our world. <laughs> We're going to replace it. What's he say? You can't just give up this material world if you want to. You've got to have that Palam Drishtam in life. Higher taste. In the material world also, when you get a higher taste, you can give up other things which may not be so good. Yeah, that opportunity. But see, everyone has this opportunity. Give up higher taste, spiritual taste. And it's easy to give up material taste. It's not that we should be, you know, artificial about it. We have to develop this higher taste. So this is the same thing. We like to hear stories, we like to watch cinemas, now we like to watch the cinema, the, what is it? on the computer, all these different games and things, that stuff together. But these are the best, these are the most enjoyable ones. Everyone likes to hear a bit of a, you know, different variety. It's, it's full of variety, not all fun. There's so many love pastimes here, so many wonderful pastimes in the relationship with the world. Just like we like to read it in this world. People like to read about war sometimes, they like to read about fighting, they like to watch boxing, they like to watch wrestling. They like this, they like that. Different people like different things. This is all there in God. It's all there in the spiritual. There it is. Listen. The gorilla was a great friend of Boma His brother, the gorilla's brother was named Minda. Vivida was the minister of King Subhiva. That's an amazing thing. Previously, he was the minister of King Subhiva, who was a great friend and a great assistant of Lord Ramachandra. In his pastimes, thousands of years ago. But because of association, he became a He became a nimical towards Krishna. But he was seen as serving Krishna. We all were. Everybody was. But now, somehow, that by association, by our choice, of course, we got the association, we become a little bit of nimical. And it can change. When the Vinagrilla heard the story of his friend Bhomasura being killed by Krishna, he planned to pay mischief throughout the country in order to avenge the death of Bhomasura. His first business was to set fire in villages, towns, and industrial and mining places, as well as in the residential quarters of the mercantile men who were busy dairy farming and protecting cows. Something like sometimes the village said you had a London mystery, isn't it? They went out of bed and had to do some mischief. Smashing things, breaking things, burning things, suddenly got killed, and they all got all worked up for some reason or another. Or, yeah, see there. It's a little grill also. In this way, it created great disturbance all over the country, especially in the province of Kapwar. The city of Dwarka is situated in Kapwar. Because Lord Krishna used to live in this city, Vivida specifically made it target for his disturbance. 
The video was as powerful, as powerful as 10,000 elephants. Wow. Sometimes he would go to the seashore with his powerful hands. And go to the seashore with his powerful hands. He would create so much disturbance in the sea at Brighton. <laughs> that he would flood the flood the neighboring cities and villages. Watch out tonight. The villa might be out. <laughs> Careful. Don't go too close. Luckily there's a hill. <laughs> Often he would go to the hermitage of great saintly persons and sages. Such as one. What number? Temple Street. One Temple Street. Careful. By smashing their beautiful gardens and orchards. Not only did he create disturbances in that way, sometimes he would pass urine and stool on their sacred sacrificial arenas. He was very well behaved. He would thus pollute the whole atmosphere. He also kidnapped both men and women, taking them away from the residential places to the caves of the mountains, and for putting them in the cave. He would close the entrances with large chunks of stone. Like the briggy insect, which arrests and carries away many flies and other insects and puts them within the holes of the trees where it lives. Just Dravida, Dravida, regularly defied the law and order of the country. Not only that, but he would sometimes pollute the female members of many aristocratic families, forcibly raping them. Oh my god. It's disgusting. <laughs> While creating such great disturbances all over the country, sometimes he heard very sweet musical sounds from the Rivatica mountain. And so he entered the mountainous region. There he saw Lord Balaam in the midst of many beautiful young girls, enjoying their company while singing and dancing. He became captivated by the beauty of Lord Balaram's body, whose every feature was very beautiful, decorated as he was with a garland of lotus flowers. Simply, beside the young girl's lap, dressed and garlanded with flowers, exhibited much beauty. Lord Balaram seemed fully intoxicated from drinking. A Rooney beverage! <laughs> Let's have a cup of Rooney. Here, bring me a cup. <laughs> <laughs> Where's our friend gone? He's gone. He didn't get his Bruni. He's coming back. Is he coming back? He sounded like he'd be back. Make sure yes. he gets a lot of Bruni before he goes to his next party. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just test it. might not be sweet enough. It might not be uh, the measurements. I think so. Is it sweet enough? Well done, Bruni beverage. He disrespected the women, even in the presence of Balaram. 
Lord Balaam's name suggests not only that he is very powerful, but that he takes pleasure in exhibiting extraordinary strength. So he took a stone and threw it at the gorilla. The gorilla, however, actually avoided being struck by the stone. In order to insult Balaam, the gorilla took away the earthen pot in which the beauty was kept. Steal the pot. The villa, being thus intoxicated and his limited strength, began to tear off the valuable clothes worn by Balaram and the accompanying young girls. He was so puffed up that he thought Balaram could not do anything to chastise him, and he continued to offend Balaram G and his companions. When Lord Balaram saw the disturbances created by the gorilla and heard that he had already performed many mischievous activities all over the country, he became very angry and decided to kill him. Amelie took his club in his hands. The gorilla could understand that now Baram was going to attack him. To counteract Baram, he immediately uprooted a big oak tree. And with great force, he came and struck Lord Baram's head. Lord Baram, however, immediately caught hold of the big tree and remained undisturbed, just like a great mountain. To retaliate, he took his club named <coughs> Fernando and hit the gorilla with it, severely injuring his head. Currents of blood, this is too much. Currents of blood flowed from the gorilla's head with great force. The stream of blood simply enhanced his beauty, like a stream of liquid manganese coming out of a great mountain. You may think this is all very horrific and horrible. But where's it all coming from? Krishna's given us blood. Everything comes from Krishna originally. This is just what to say is in the end we lose it all. Whether it's this way or that way, we lose all our blood anyway. We're so attached to it. When we see blood, we become horrified, right? Isn't it? Sometimes. Oh my God. And we don't encourage it in this world. It's not at all to be encouraged. Although we're bound to lose it. In this case, because the gorilla was offensive. He was trying to attack and disturb. So Bara is reciprocating with him in the way that he wants. In the spiritual world, there's no blood. Everyone's body is, is, is transcendental, spiritual. In this material, there are all these things there, bones and blood and skin and flesh. That's what the body is made of. It's there. We cover, it's covered by skin and we don't see it. But it is there. The material world is like that. It's covered. You can't see externally quite what's going on sometimes. But it's all going on. These things are going on. By hearing these pastimes, believe it or not, if we hear with a submissive heart, we will lose our, our tendency to cause violence to others. We'll lose our tendency to see others suffer. This is the amazing thing. The striking of Baram's club did not even slightly disturb the gorilla. On the contrary, he had rooted another big oak tree. And after clipping off all its leaves, he again struck Balaram's head with it. But Balaram, with the help of his club, tore the tree to pieces. Since the gorilla was very angry, he took another tree in his hands and struck Lord Balaram's body. Again, Lord Balaram tore the tree to pieces, and the fighting continued. Each time the gorilla would bring out a big oak tree, or a big tree to strike Balaram. Balaram would tear the tree to pieces by the striking of his club. And the gorilla, the villain, would clutch another tree from another direction, and again attacked Baran in the same way. As a result of this continuous fighting, the forest became treeless. It didn't go down very well with the modern environmentalism. And again, it's not something that they don't know, grow again in Italy. This is the nature of Krishna can just create again like that. We can't do that. When no more trees were available, the villa took help from the hills and threw large pieces of stone like rainfall upon the body of Balaram. Lord Balaram, in a great sporting mood, began to smash those big pieces of stone into mere pebbles. The gorilla, being bereft of all trees and stone slabs, now stood before Balaram and waved his strong fist. Then with great force, he began to beat Lord Balaram's chest with his fist. This time, Lord Balaram became most angry, since the gorilla was striking him with his hands. Lord Baron would not strike him back with his own weapons, the club or the plough. Simply with his fist he struck, struck the collarbone of the gorilla. This blow proved fatal to De Ville, who immediately vomited blood and fell unconscious upon the ground. 
when the gorilla fell all the hills and forests appeared to topple. After this horrible incident, all the siddhas, great sages and saintly persons from the upper planetary system showered flowers on the person of Lord Bala and vibrated sounds glorifying his supremacy. All of them chanted, All oh, glories to Lord Bala. Let us offer our respectful obeisances unto your lotus feet. By killing this great demon, Vividha, you have initiated an auspicious era for the world. All such jubilant sounds of victory were heard from outer space. After killing the great demon, Vividha, and being worshipped by showers of flowers and glorious sounds of victory, Balaram returned to his capital city, Dwar. End of chapter. That's one pastime. Balaram has so many pastimes of different kinds. And uh, of course the Davida Gorilla was liberated, returned to his spiritual position. And by hearing about that, our hearts can become a It may sound a bit gory, but uh, the material wood is a bit gory. Yeah. Yeah. You only have to open the newspaper to see some of the things that are going on. In this world. So many things. Yeah. So today being his appearance day, we're going to have a feast. We have some more kirtan. We have this beverage. It's, it's a kind of a modern day variety of Bruni beverage. In one of his other pastimes, when he was on the banks of the Rabi Muna. He was enjoying with his girlfriends, Carol girlfriends, and he wanted the River Yamuna. The River Yamuna is a beautiful river. Now it's changed into the modern day evolution and so on. But it's a beautiful river that flows through the garden. On the banks of that river, Krishna and Balaam would perform their pastimes with their daughters. Loving pastimes. <coughs> so one time he was there with his, his Carol girlfriends, and they were enjoying various pastimes. And uh, he wanted the he was drinking this uh, Baruni beverage. It's actually like a honey. It's like a very, um, well, I don't know if it's fermented or what, but it's like a, a rich, like a very intoxicating honey, which was oozing out of the trees. So he was drinking this beverage. And he was, he has a right to be intoxicated. He's a supreme personality of Prophet. He could do anything about it. So he was in like a seemingly intoxicated, and he wanted the river Yamuna, come here, he said, come here. River Yamuna didn't come. She said, oh, you're intoxicated. I'm not coming. <laughs> and Balaam got a little angry. He took his plow. If you don't come, I'll force you. And he took his plow and started to drag the river. And then the river came. And uh, then some past times were there. So at that time, that's the time when he was first taking this Bruni beverage. So Bruni is actually one of his, actually one of his wives. She appears in his form to satisfy her. So today we have that Bruni beverage, of course, wasn't quite that. This is a, this is a, a modern day, uh, uh, what do we say, <laughs> a concoction or whatever. No, so this is made out of various things. Those who are milk, uh, what it, lac, what it, lactose, what is it called? Can't take milk. Lactose and so I would not recommend you to take this, <laughs> but you can if you really want to. <laughs> Watch, we're serving five minutes. There's a five minutes for questions, and then uh, I request everyone to come up and take take a plate and be served at the table tonight. Okay. So, do you want Rooney before or after lunch? Before, during, before, during, and after. Before, during, and after. Any questions? I have a few already. May the spiritual world uh, continue and grow like a fire. Yay! 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 It is, as you know, from when you were a young boy, how it was to how it is now. It's grown tenfold, yeah? yeah. Is it uh, the era that we're in at the moment? Is everybody seeing what you see, what I see? Or is it just a mystery? Oh, well, the, the, like the seasons of the year, we go through different seasons. Mm. Different weathers, different, you know, things take place at different Kind of year basically. There are different eras in the universe, and at different times, there's you know, different modes of nature are affecting people in different ways. So, this particular time we're in now is an opportunity actually for people in general to have this age, which is called the age of Kali. 
And generally this age is not a very spiritually beneficial age in one sense. It's a very materialistic age. And that we can also see is going on. There's a, a tremendous development of materialism. But at the same time, this particular stage we're in that, within that, there is a great spiritual opportunity for people. Because the process of self-realization at this point in time has been made very, very accept uh, 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 what's the word? Um, easy accessible at this point in time. Particularly through this process which is called Sankirtan. Sankirtan is Sanskrit word it means chanting and dancing, basically speaking. Singing, dancing, chanting, and feasting. Um, glorifying the holy names of God and so on, and hearing about Krishna's pastimes and what have you. In the same, there are many other groups in various ways who also got some, um, let's say, uh, uplifting, spiritual, no doubt. But primarily, the Sanctan movement is the process in this age which is bringing about auspiciousness in this particular age, which is like the winter age, as far as the age of the universe goes. It's making like spring, giving everyone a chance to spring. And not everyone takes the opportunity. So simultaneous with the, the rapid advance of materially, this spiritual opportunity is also afforded to everybody. So yes, to some extent, there is, there is, at least in the Western world, we're seeing a lot of changes. And there are changes in other directions too, which are maybe negative also. But there's a lot of, you know, a lot of people who are showing a lot more interest in spiritual life, no doubt about that, all over the world. They're like opening a doorway or... Yeah, they're cracking the clouds. Sunshine coming through the clouds. Well, cheers. Thank you. Cheers, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Drink to your heart's content. One question, Maharaj. <coughs> what I can't quite get my head around is my father on this is described as Krishna, Krishna's brother, but he's also Krishna's first expansion. So, is he's like the word brother, like loosely used? Yes and no. Now the wonderful thing about this is that just like we have different relationships in this world, no doubt, um, we're experiencing that because all those relationships are there in the spiritual realm. Now in the spiritual realm, as in this material world, we forget Krishna. We forget our relationship with Krishna, basically speaking. That's called the influence of Maya. Now in the spiritual world, there's another influence called Yoga Maya. Now, Yoga Maya, I don't get into the detail, is sabbatical. Now, Yoga Maya, the purpose is, is also to call forgetfulness of who Krishna is and who you are. But there is, but the relation there is different. The material world is a relation with me in the center, and the spiritual world, Krishna's in the center. But people are not, even his own expansions, are not thinking, generally speaking, that Krishna is God. Because as soon as you start thinking Krishna is God, there's like a barrier there. Even in relationships in this world, there are different types of intimacy. The, the relationship, although it's, it's in this material world, it's not, legally speaking, encouraged, and it's not considered good. Paramore love, for instance, is more intimate than official love. It's in the material world, it's also experienced to some extent, that excitement. In the spiritual world, the relationships are without any kind, at least in relation with Krishna. There is a realm where there is, there is a mood of reverence, there is a mood of understanding that Krishna is God, and so on and so forth. Or the expansion of God. But in relation with Krishna, you would not understand that he's God. He's just, the only, I just love him. I just love him. So in this mood, all these moods are there. Now, Varam, he represents the, you can say, the brotherly mood of God. So all the Krishna's expansions are not just they are separately constituted, but at the same time they're Christians. This is kind of inconceivable to material measurement. That's how it is. And they're in the mood of being the servant of Krishna, even though they are Krishna. Or they're in the mood of being Krishna's brother. Because you, you enjoy having brothers. You enjoy sister relationships. There's a pleasure there, you see. But Bara fulfills that desire of Krishna to have a brotherly relationship. Now, if the idea is that, oh, my brother is God, it becomes a little different, doesn't it? Or if, say, for instance, on our experience, you may have, a, even in brotherly, if your brother is the proud prime minister of England, bless his soul, if he's the prime minister of England, you know, you don't treat him like the prime minister of England when he comes to home to see you, do you? Oh, the prime minister's coming home to see you tonight. It's your brother. Don't worry about it. You go out and have a drink together or whatever you do with your brother, don't you? 
You don't think, oh, here's my brother. And if you think, you think my brother, you don't think, here's, here's the Prime Minister of England, my goodness, I better you know, salute or something. You don't think like that. If you're the older brother, you might, you might even say, well, you might even be like, you know, you know, whatever your relationship is, you know. And as soon as that other thing comes in, it breaks that relationship. So simply with God, he wants to enjoy. So from Baran, all those kind of brotherly relationships, friendly relationships, service relationships, develop all those, you know, from him, they expand. I would say it's almost like there's a time and a place for everything, yeah? Everything's set up in your life, yeah? It's almost like you're the witness of what you've seen and what you're seeing, yeah? So it's almost like it'll happen in due course. Whatever will happen, it will just fit into place, you know? It's almost like a puzzle, yeah? It fits together. In the material world, it's going on like that. Yeah. So it works. Everything is going on by, you can say, by a, amazing arrangements. Yeah. Witness. We're witnessing the change. Yeah. What we want to do is not just witness things as we go on, we want to enter into the spiritual realm, you see. Not just witness or even be aware of the material show that's going on, like a drama or something. That's one stage of realization. But we want to go one step further, we want to enter into the reality of the spiritual existence, the spiritual reality. The past time of we can. But when you're that past, you're thinking of Krishna's God, it puts a restriction on the relationship there. Or it establishes that particular relationship as being your relationship. It it. It gives it that uh, century, that kind of ancient kind of myth, yeah? Rather than to be free and see it as good, but not to yeah. be like... Yeah. Yeah. It has yeah. its restrictions. Yeah. So sometimes, of course, Banam does. But in general, in those past times in Vrindavan, He's always in that mood of brotherly mood. But he's an elder, so sometimes he has the protective mood, like an elder brother. He's not elder or younger, there's no question of being an elder man. But he's in the mood of being a brother, in the mood of being elder like that. Uh, Maharaj, in the, uh, in the Vedas, in the Shastra, it says that the, the first step in being able to go back. <laughs> <laughs> the first step in being able to go to the spiritual world. She's intoxicated. She's totally intoxicated. The shop's still hot. She's just after the next cup. Look. I've had on, I've had on, I've had on. You see the same as Shanti. Don't care. That sounds pretty heavy. Look, look, look. You're going to be all over the show tonight. She's going to be wobbling. She's going to be wobbling there, man. Don't overdose. Oh, get that shot. <laughs> so, Prashad, if it's hot and ready, you can please come and get your plates. Thank you. Yeah, you're all so sweetly. In the, in, the, in the Vedas, it says, the sages explain that the first step to go back to the spiritual sky is uh, to hear. <coughs> could, could you speak about that? To hear? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, we have to hear. If we want to, we can speculate. We can work it out. Try to work it out. But generally, we hear. If we want to go somewhere, we ask somebody, or we read somewhere, or we find out from somewhere how to get it. We want hearing. If we want to go somewhere. When we go back to the spiritual world, we generally have to hear from somebody who knows how to go back. It's not just a question of speculating about it. It's very rare that that may happen. So we hear from somebody who knows. But that may take a little humility, because in the material world we like to see ourselves in the center, we like to think we know it. We've got our own, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to work it out my way. We've got that tendency sometimes. So a little humility, we, we get humiliated in the material world, we don't still be humble sometimes. Like. We still remain a little bit, you know, puffed up, a little bit selfish sometimes. So this humility in the spiritual life, what to speak in the material world, is a prerequisite. And that humility begins with hearing from us somebody who knows. Somebody who knows the path back to God. Who knows what the spiritual world is. If you don't know what the goal is, you're unlikely to reach the goal. 
you have to know what the goal is. You have to know the means to reach the goal. But that's basically the first thing. You know what I should do. What is what step should I make? What is the goal? We don't know. There are so many goals in this world. To find what the goal is and the means to to attain that goal. And that requires from hearing somebody who knows the path, who knows the way, who knows how to get there. Next year, we're more or less lost. Get a material we have to hear from somebody who knows. It takes a little bit of humility. It takes a little bit sometimes of you know, experience sometimes to accept the fact that we don't, you know, we cannot work it out on our own. We need help. Made easier by the uh, the fact that the Lord has come into the world as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sarah Hare Krishna. And simply by hearing that, even without necessarily knowing what the goal is, or knowing what we should be doing in detail, it's made it possible for us to become pure in us, simply by hearing it. It seems like it's time for... Yes? Maharaj, I wanted to ask... Yeah. Um, uh, it's, I think it's linked to this question. Um, if we, we're trying to make advancement in our spiritual lives, um, and we're, we're sort of, and I know there are, this is a bit of maybe advanced for uh, other devotees, but it's just talking about the four regulative principles and chanting of rounds, uh, not intoxicating ourselves, taking drugs, drinking alcohol, uh, not eating meat. Um, what's the fourth one? I've forgotten. No gambling, oh, I'm just But, so just, I just wonder, like, for example, so if we, if, so for someone who's not followed those four regulative principles, hard and fast, are they, have they got a chance to, you know, kingdom of Krishna, paradise? Have they got a chance to, a chance get, to what? Sorry? To be released from birth and death? Can we get, can we get into Krishna's land of glory? By, by doing that or by not doing that? Well, not, not doing it, we're trying to do it, but maybe not doing it. You're saying if they're not, they're not following the path of the path, not strictly. You're trying. Yeah, you can. 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 <laughs> well, you see, the, the, the regulated principles are not spiritual. Chanting Hare Krishna is spiritual. Obviously, we have to do, you only go back to God when you actually love Krishna. Now, when you love somebody, what will you do? Huh? When you love somebody, you, you try and find out. What they like, and what they try like. and give it to them. You're trying to do the things that they like, is it not? If you have a lover or something, you're trying to do what they love, what like also to attract their love, to awaken their love. So it's natural in relationship with somebody you love. We're trying to, so we're not going to get into the details of that because what happens is, in certain situations in life, different principles are, let's say, necessary. Required, requested, whatever you want to call it, guided, given, to help you to actually develop your love of Krishna. We see, for instance, um, with Arjuna, Bhima, they were very devoted to Krishna. They were not following the four regulated principles that you're talking about. There are different rules, I would say rules or guidelines, which they were following, but they were following the guidelines according to their situation. These four regulated principles are to help us to live our life more in the mode of goodness. Because in the mode of goodness, it is easier to practice spiritual life. Now, if you can't follow those for circumstantial reasons, weakness of heart, whatever the reason may be, maybe we haven't accepted it even at this stage, it doesn't exclude a person from making at least spiritual progress. So it depends upon the reason why one is in that situation. Now, if it's just because you're attached to intoxication or attached 
to elicit sex, that's something else. But if it's because of circumstantial situations, that's different. Um, and all, there are many different circumstances. We should try our very best to follow these principles because they help us to be in the mode of goodness. They help us to control our senses. They help our consciousness to become more clean and purified. And it's, a, it's an austerity, it's a sacrifice. We have to make some kind of sacrifice towards Krishna, but sometimes there may be circumstances where it's not possible. The scriptures are full of situations like even prostitutes. Women are in the role of prostitutes. Went back to Godhead because that was their conditioned situation. But they were great devotees of Krishna. And Krishna understands your attitude. It's the attitude more than anything else which is taken into account. And that, of course, is a little more difficult to, to uh, necessarily judge from the ordinary judgmental point of view, not we want to, but Krishna looks at our attitude. And if your attitude is one that, you know, we're trying our best to please the Lord, but they say every endeavor is covered by some fault. In this age of Kali, there's always going to be, it's the age of Kali, this is very, say, it's a great age. Prophet one time said, everyone's got their faults. You have yours, I have mine. If I criticize you, you criticize me, we'll get nowhere. We love our children. We try, try your very best to follow the regulated principles if you're on that path. You know, the regulated principles of freedom. And if you're having to be honest, discuss with someone confidentially about it and see how we can make some progress, how we can still move forward in our spiritual lives. Don't be dishonest, to be honest. In relation to what I said, can I make one point? Yeah. Yeah. One point related to what you said. Yeah. I think, you know, in this age that we're living in, this kind of yoga, it's a very, very heavy energy now. And so Chaitanya and Mahaprabhu come to this age. So Lord Chaitanya and Mahaprabhu, he understands our position. And he isn't putting emphasis. Or I could correct me if I'm wrong, he's not putting emphasis on the way he's a He puts emphasis on absorbing yourself with all your heart in trying to love him. And naturally, your addictions will diminish. When, when you focus on trying to love Krishna and serve the devotees, naturally, your addictions will diminish. Is, isn't that mood of Lord Chaitanya? It's a general mood. If we are a part of the material world, yeah. because most people are not from these are also Brahminical principles. And there'll be natural principles to life now that can develop in time naturally. But they're not the yes, as you say, they're not loaded with time as endless. Don't they catch it so much at all? And they did to Jai Ray Mada. If we're uh, if we're born into the material world, we're part of it, we can't just suddenly um, start to uh, make ourselves free from it. We have to walk through it. Gradual process. Gradual process. Yeah. Gradual, slow process where we eventually find a brighter light. That's why association is really important. It's when you're in the association of persons who are on a similar path, it's a lot easier to follow the path. Just like, you know, so many of us here are vegetarians, but when you're living with vegetarians, it's really easy to be vegetarian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you're living with persons who don't take it talk to them, it's a lot easier yeah. not to take it talk to them. Like, when in Rome, do us the Romans, we're all very uh, sensitive, yeah? You and beings. If we were all out in the desert, yeah, we would all just drink cactus water and chat to survive, yeah? If we were the Romans, we would try and close it. Yeah. You're surrounded by yeah. your uh, mayor, your uh, society will affect your existence. Yeah. So association, that's why we try to give a little association in our sangha. Like you say, Baba, uh, Lord Krishna doesn't judge us, but he sees us for what we are, what we go through, you know? What you go through will bring you to another level of you. Know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like that table?
Leon's journey though too. <laughs>